Weekly resets are one of the ways to keep yourself organized. And if you are one of those people who are procrastinating or doesn't quite have a set schedule, weekly resets are definitely the way to go. And in this video, I'm going to go over a couple of things, a couple of tricks that I do. And in general, how setting up certain goals, even if they're just one week goals, can help you be more productive. So first and foremost, don't overdo it, obviously. And weekly reset doesn't mean that you need to dedicate one day and just do everything in that day. What I usually do is I break down my tasks. If they feel a bit overwhelming in my head and if I wrote them down and they feel like it's too much, I break them down into like smaller tasks. Like for example, I need to renew my son's passport and just the thought of doing all the paperwork gives me a little bit of anxiety. So what I did is I made a list of what I need to get ready in order to start the process. So I broke it down. And if that's making you feel better and if you have some kind of anxiety around big tasks, then breaking them down into little steps is definitely going to help you. No matter what, your weekly reset is going to take more than one day, 100%. So. Everything you plan to do in one week is usually going to get moved to the next week, and that's fine. Uh, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. But um, learn to kind of separate your tasks so they're not as overwhelming and you don't feel like all you do is resetting and cleaning and decluttering. So basically, I'm half-assing it. I did a video on this, so I'm gonna link it somewhere, that um, you don't have to necessarily finish right away what's on your to-do list. Everything can be broken down and not everything needs to get done in a day. So what I do is I usually take two days. So if I know that I need to do weekly reset, I start on Friday. So it's usually Friday and Saturday or Friday or even Sunday. Making a list and keeping things more or less organized. I really rely on Notion. It's uh, an amazing app. They're not sponsoring this video, but I've been using it for years now, at least four years, I would say. And it's such a great tool for anyone who has trouble keeping up with a particular schedule and doesn't necessarily want to write it down on a piece of paper and wants to be more digital. It's definitely a great tool for anything. I use it for literally everything, for my YouTube channel, for any of my trips, for my weekly reset, for my list of the books that I'm reading at the moment. Super amazing app, I truly recommend. It's very useful because you can share that workspace. So if you have a partner that you want to do a project together or you have to do a project together, you can share that workspace between the two of you. Even if it's a weekly reset, you should not be doing it alone. Shopping obviously is one of the big things. I prefer to do it midweek, so it's not necessarily at the end of the week because it gets too busy. And meal prepping is definitely on my to-do list. I didn't start it yet. I'm just um, doing a little bit of research how I can get ready when my kids are back from Croatia and how to make it easier on me so I don't have to be overwhelmed because I am almost eight months pregnant. So it's going to be a bit of a tough adjustment for when they're back in 10 days. But meal prepping is definitely one of the things that I'm gonna start dabbing into. They were away for about a month and a half, so like getting back into schedule, getting back into cooking. And then I was following this YouTuber and she was saying that it actually really does help. So I'm just gonna have to buy some containers and for my weekly reset, I'm gonna have to do meal prep as well. Another really important idea is always to know the next step. Whether you have a list of five things you want to do this particular week for your weekly reset, know what's your next task because not knowing what's your next step and next task is going to definitely put brakes on the whole productivity thing and the whole weekly reset thing. If you know like, okay, I need to fold laundry and then I need to do my sheets and then I need to do my grocery shopping list. As long as you know what's your next step, you can slow down, definitely slow down, but never stop breaks uh, really should not be that complicated. You can uh, make yourself a cup of tea, you can do some meditation, you can just stare into like one point just to train your eyes. You can do anything as long as these breaks are productive. And don't throw me under the bus here, you should not be productive 24-7. It, it's normal for us as human beings, but if you can uh, do the most and make the most out of each day, out of each moment that you have, 
then that's definitely going to improve your productivity. Choose a favorite podcast or a favorite book that you usually don't have the time to dab into during your week if you have a busy week. So I have a particular book I usually listen or a particular podcast, something entertaining, not necessarily something uh, productive and something super scientific, something that's just going to put you like in a lighter mood and keep your company while you clean, while you reset, while you do your day to day things and only allow yourself to listen to that podcast or that book that's going to be a guilty pleasure when you are doing either clothes, cooking, decluttering, whatever it is. Simplify the tasks that you have to do. Don't overwhelm yourself. You can always break them down, as I said before, in little things to do. It's going to be so much easier and so much lighter on you. And every time I know I have to put all of my stuff away and all my laundry, I just, you know, do half of the task. I just fold them nicely and I leave them on the bed. And hopefully by the end of the day, I'll be able to put them away. And if you have a vague idea, not necessarily step by step, minute by minute routine, you definitely are already more organized and more on point than anyone else who doesn't. I really did learn that in the last couple of weeks since my kids left, when they were around, there was a very good idea of how my day looks. I know that this is what I need to do. They go to school, I need to cook lunch, I need to get them ready. When they're back, they need to eat. They have their extracurricular and physical activities. They're coming back home, we need to have bath time. Like It was like on schedule, but when they left uh, this summer, it's definitely not having that many responsibilities made me slightly lazy, slightly like, oh, you know, I don't need to get up that early because there's no little kids to take to school or daycare. I can take a break. Mind you, I'm pregnant. Yes, it's taken a toll on my body, but that's not a reason for me to be fully unproductive. So a couple of days I was just lazy in bed and then I had to kind of gather myself up and come up with a lighter schedule, with the summer schedule. Do make sure that you are adjusting to the season you're in. So your weekly schedule should really reflect what season you're in. If it's winter, if it's cold, if it's chilly, and then make a much lighter schedule. If it's spring and you feel like you have more energy, always listen to your body and adjust to whatever makes you feel comfortable. You don't need to overdo it. I know we live in a society when everything needs to get done now and right this second, but try to adjust to like a circadian rhythm almost, I would say. Automate when possible. Make sure that you can delegate. If there's certain things that you can afford and you can delegate, even if it's your weekly tasks. For example, if you can find someone to help you do grocery shopping or help you do cleaning of your environment, then definitely do that automation. It's going to make it that much easier for you, obviously. But you know, certain things that don't make us happy and don't give us a certain level of satisfaction. And I know that we're such dopamine creatures, but if it really bothers you to do certain things on your list, then if you find a way to automate it and you find that you can afford it, and if your time is costs more per hour than doing that particular task, do it. I believe in delegation. I believe in automation. And if something I can delegate to someone and get it off my plate in my weekly reset, then I'll definitely do it. Measure and track progress when you do your weekly report. Always look at your one to two previous weeks and then look one to two weeks ahead to see how busy your schedule is, how many things you got accomplished. Give yourself a self-review, I would say, and think, oh, maybe I overwhelmed myself last week. That is why so many tasks got moved from last week's schedule to this week. Maybe I should do three things a day instead of five things a day. So there's so many things that you need to pay attention to. Our past definitely tells us a lot about our future. So if you're trying to get an idea of how your week went and how many things you accomplished and what actually got done, always look at your schedule and look what you accomplished and what you didn't. And that's going to help you make a much better and much realistic schedule for the following week. As I was talking before, like optimize your environment, set the mood for whatever the next task is going to be. For example, for me, if I need to get into the mood, like, okay, I need to sit and do some research and I need to get inspiration for my next video. If my weekly task has this particular point that I need to record a video 
video and I need to get ready for next week. I am trying to set my environment to put myself in the mood. I would watch a couple of my favorite YouTubers. I would research the internet before I even start coming up with any kind of ideas or writing anything down. It's just that as a content creator, I constantly see ideas around me. I just don't always get a chance to take a note and write them down and I don't always feel the inspiration. But when I know that, okay, today is like Thursday or Friday and in my weekly reset, I need to sit and get ready a video, then I am definitely making an intention and setting the environment to feel much more inspired because it doesn't just come just easy like that. And I've been reading a couple of books on that, on how to hold on to inspiration, how to feel inspired, how to make sure that you don't miss out on those particular moments when something comes up to your mind and you need to like take it down right away. Certain times you won't have the time to take it down and you need to actually sit and write or research whether or not you're inspired. So if one of your weekly resets is, you know, I need to do research, then set up the environment. Listen a couple of podcasts on the topic that you're trying to do research. Watch a couple of videos. It's going to make wonders. Experiment and innovate. Always experiment with your schedule. See what works for you. See what got accomplished. See what gave you anxiety. Adjust. Make changes. Move tasks to the following week. If it's not something super important, move them to the following month. There's no shame in that. As long as your schedule makes you comfortable and you're okay with it and you know that the most important things got done, that's all that matters. You need to make sure the schedule is adjusted to you, not you adjusting to your schedule. And in order to minimize your cleaning and weekly resets, um, just um, have less things. Minimalism is the way to go. I uh, never thought I'm going to say this, but for sure, be a minimalist and then there's going to be less things to worry about. Other than that, please do comment what kind of schedule you have. What do you use? What kind of apps do you use to do your weekly reset or any kind of tracking system that you use? I would be more than happy to hear some ideas and I'll see you in my next video.